Look at how dark that camshaft is. Holy cow. It's really, really dark. Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's all the same. Look at this. It looks like after oil chains, we had to do a crank flush on this. This is really bad, so dirty. Dried up oil. Guys, there we go, welcome back. We got a new one here, GMC Acadia with a 3.6 engine, 3.6. All right, this is a new one in the garage. I've been working on this a couple times already. I've been going in and out of this house, diagnosing what's the problem. We had an engine code related with the timing chain correlation, timing chain sensor, and blah, blah, blah. There's a lot of videos on this timing chain on the Acadia. I believe the same thing as a Traverse. Anything with the 3.6, there's a Cadillac engine with the 3.6 as well. It's all the same thing. Just the way how they install, some of them is like front install, some is like transverse install, different, but it's all the same as 3.6. On today's video, this is going to be a blog, this is not a DIY. I'm just going to take you guys in a journey of doing this job on the Acadia. This is a 2010. Basically, uh, this thing needs a new timing chain guides and all the timing components replaced. You can see I took the headlight already. And a bumper uh, just for a better and easy work on this vehicle I got the wheel out half of the front wheel liner is out so I can work close to the vehicle like this okay I got no bumper no headlight so uh, it's easy uh, you can see here I trimmed some out already intake tube is gone uh, a coolant tank is gone right here and there's a little module I don't know what's in here it's gone Took that out. Uh, fuse block, I disconnected it. And here's the connector, tape it down so nothing goes in the pins and connectors. Dust and dirt, nothing go in there. Tape it down and then uh, there's a engine mount right here, two piece mounts, I took that out. And then the upper rad hose and housing outlet, I took that out, it's gone. Uh, power steering reservoir moved to the side the disconnect from the steel hose right here from the hose took that out so now we have lots of room I'm trying to make more room in here we're gonna be opening up the top of the engine take out this intake manifold the valve cover on the front and back we're gonna open it up so we can see the timing chain on this side right here and we're gonna do farther diagnose um, the concern on this is uh, we got an engine light on related with the timing chain component here. Uh, I'm guessing it built stretch with the old 3.6 engine is always built stretch and it's out of time. Um, so we're gonna retime it. We're gonna check out the, the mark, see if it skip a tooth or two. So we're gonna open this up so that we could do a farther diagnose. And then that's where I am right now is uh, taking out this intake manifold. It helps with like six bolts right here and then one right here in the middle, the little one in the corner. I took this off already uh, about a couple months ago to get the diagnose checked. And uh, we end up telling him that it was a timing chain issue. So now, uh, two months later, it's in my garage. He want me to go continue work on this engine. So this is where I am right now. Uh, there's a lot of stuff to move here, you know. Um, gonna be uh, disconnect the coil plug same thing on the other side and then we'll clean this up all this area right here we'll clean it up we'll disconnect the valve cover and same thing on the other side so let's uh, quickly do that I'm just gonna fast forward that's all the boring stuff we'll get to the part where all the timing chain and guides are so let's get started all right guys there we go look at this progress slowly progress so um <clears throat> valve is loose now the main thing here is you have to move this harness away around the valve so gonna work everything here first in the middle and then i move this harness over 
this side is clean on this side now so slowly working the valves bolts on this side there's probably will be three on the f corner here and then probably like six or seven at the back the main thing is push this harness out going that way there's some AC lines that you need to push towards the firewall power steering hose towards the firewall so you can go by feel the bolts here and then just use the angle ratchet this is what I use here it's the best you can use the small 10 millimeter nut so all these bolts around the valve cover is gone is loose so slowly let's take them out the main thing here is this back cover is the worst one it's the worst but make sure you get all that thing loosed up and then everything should follow just go by the feel look at how dark that camshaft is holy cow it's really really dark jesus christ so dark man look at this lack of oil change for sure wow right let's take out the one on the left side bank yeah it's all the same look at this holy cow really really bad It looks like after oil change, we had to do a crank flush on this. This is really bad, so dirty. Dried up oil. All right guys, so let's uh, take a look at this uh, left side chain right here. We're just gonna take a look at this chain here. You can see there's a lot of play in here and this cam fraser is moving this is not so i know that they're not supposed to move like that when you move it because when they're on low idle they are locked in place don't move they don't move we're on park or low idle the only thing this thing that disengages is we're on a really high rpm who knows uh, maybe 400 or 500 because they get advanced or retard so that's not right. It's not supposed to move like that. That's why we are changing everything. The chain, two cam phasers on the left and then on the right. All four of them, we're going to change them all. Okay, so we're going to continue work on this. We're going to take out the accessories belt, the pulleys, the power steering, and just move it in the way. Alternator, we're just going to move it away. Uh, crank pulley, the water pump, we'll take it out. So slowly working on this, slow to progress. All right, guys, so... Down here, I jacked up the engine from the oil pan bracket right in the corner. I took out that engine mount nut on the front. You can see that's the engine mount right there. Same thing on the back right. I took out the nut so we could uh, bring this engine up high for us to work right here. So you can see a lot way better than before because the engine was way down there and it will be working up on the top here. Uh, we're gonna be taking out this tensioner the idler pulley tensioner bolt is 13 idler pulley is 15 and then the two alternator nut right here is 15 so we're just gonna quickly take this out all right so there's two more bolts right here on the tensioner uh, 13 mil on those two we're just gonna crack it loose we'll just use the extension on this one right here because there's a water pump pulleys on the way to me, it looks like this never been changed. This water pump before, and then there's just a lot of dirt and mud right there. All right, there you go. Look at that. All right, so alternator is loose now. We're gonna move this alternator out of here. And this stud right here from the bracket on the timing cover to the alternator. This is the main thing. That's why we're taking out this alternator because of this piece right here. So, instead of taking this whole alternator here, the bottom is loose already. The main thing is this stud right here. So we're gonna 
keep this one on and I'm gonna take out the stud. I just used a seven mil socket on this uh, stud right here. Just gonna take this one out because it's a lot better to take the stud out than taking out the alternator and the harness at the back, two harness at the back. So we're just gonna take out the stud. All right, so here's the stud that we need to take out. And then now the alternator is free away from the timing cover. We're just gonna move this like this in a way. Right. Let's move on to the next one, water pumps next. So before I took out the serpentine belt, it was still on here. I loosened this uh, four bolts already, so it's easy for me to take them out because if you don't loosen this up before you take out the belt, uh, it's gonna spin this whole thing on you when you're trying to take out this uh, bolt right here. All right, guys. So taking this uh, water pump out, make sure you got a drip pan on the bottom because it's gonna start leaking. I just use uh, 10 mil sockets on this uh, seven bolts on here. There's a weak pull right here. Coolant coming out of that hole means that we have about a warning sign of changing the water pump reason. All right, guys. Check this out. I put a extension with a 19 mil socket on that crank bolt okay check this out when you uh, I've been spinning this uh, engine already and you can see it here that saggy chain right there is not that good at all it's not good so it keeps spinning it clockwise you can see that this gets worse and worse There, is a clicking sound right there. There we go. The tension is really bad. It's this sprocket for sure, this uh, cam phaser right here. And the tension is really bad. All right, let's uh, take out this uh, crank bolt, and then after that, let's uh, move the power strain pump over that way, and we'll be able to take out all these millions of bolts that hold this timing cover. And uh, after that, it should be exposed everything with the timing chain and tensioners and guides.